beautiful day today and I've come out with the boys and the girls the children our two little Jack Russells Lucy and Mac I don't walk them very often because they're Jack Russells and they're a bit of a nightmare on the lead but today is so beautiful I thought I'm gonna get out in this glorious autumn sunshine and take the little take the little beauties for a walk we've just bought a camper van we haven't picked it up yet but we've we've bought it it's ours and it's our opportunity to start having some adventures you know my husband and I have worked since we were 16 years old we didn't go to university we got our degrees later in life I was 48 when I graduated so we didn't do the traditional or conventional going to university and you know, having that experience we neither of us did it so we've bought this camper van and it's hopefully the start of some new adventures just the four of us Mark and me and oh she does this every time look, look watch 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 she gets me tied up and then I have to do this kind of weird leg in the air thing to get her untangled. So yeah, just the four of us, Mark and me, and the two two children, the two little Jack Russell children. It, it got me thinking really about adv being adventurous and doing new things and trying new things. And I'll be honest, I've never been very adventurous. And I was thinking about this earlier, about what I was like as a teenager and as a young adult. And I was always scared. I feel like I looked back and I was scared of my own shadow. I was one of those people, I'm sure I wasn't alone, but I probably felt like I was the only one. I was one of those people who would always be on the sidelines. Oh, let me just show you this. Hello, 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 hello. Have you escaped? Our dogs are uh, quite fascinated by the sheep. But yeah, I was always one of those people that was on the sidelines, terrified of joining in with things because I was so scared of looking silly making a fool of myself, being the only one who didn't know what they were doing. And the idea of that embarrassment and the, the humiliation was too great. So I spent so much of my teenage years and my young adult years just being too scared to have adventures. I wouldn't try anything. I was really scared of getting hurt, getting hurt emotionally and getting hurt physically. So things like adventurous activities, you know, anything that involved the potential for getting hurt terrified me. Even down to things like riding a push bike or, you know, diving into the water or swimming in the sea, all of those sorts of things terrified me. And I would always just be sitting on the sidelines watching everybody else having fun, making excuses for why I couldn't join in. When the reality was, it was all about being too self-conscious and too scared to let myself go and potentially make a fool of myself. So, for example, I didn't, didn't ski for the first time until I was 43 years old. 
And when I did, I realised I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> but I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. And then I did a, an indoor skydive with my son when I was 45. And I'd have never have done that in my younger years. I'd have been so frightened. And the only reason I did it, it was actually meant to be my husband and my son going. And I was going to sit on the sidelines, cheer them on and watch while inwardly feeling disappointed with myself and angry and frustrated with myself for not having the courage to have a go. But as it happened, we booked it. I think it might have been for my son's birthday. We booked it and then my husband was deployed overseas for three months because he was in the military. And I didn't want to disappoint my son and we'd paid for the ticket. So I did it and guess what? I didn't hurt myself. I didn't look stupid and I absolutely enjoyed it. And I get, there's been so many, so many times in my life that I've just sat things out and it really kind of, I'm nearly 60, I'm 59 in January. I must stop wishing my life away and saying I'm 60, I'm not. I'm 59 in January. And you know what? I'm kind of done with being a scaredy cat. I'm done with not having the courage to try new things. So getting the camper van might seem a bit silly to other people, the adventurous types. But for me, this is me really pushing myself out of my comfort zone. I want to just pack up the van and go on adventures and go and find things that I've never done before. You know, maybe a bit of wild water swimming, maybe paddle boarding. I am terrified of water. I, I can swim, I'm not a great swimmer. I can probably save myself if I needed to. <laughs> um, but I get panicky, I get frightened. So I'm gonna maybe try, I don't know, paddle boarding perhaps, or I don't know. I have done a bit of kayaking before, but again, I wasn't very good at it. And I was scared the whole time. So instead of just really kind of letting go and giving it a go, I was reserved and scared. So the camper van, I want to, I want to travel around Europe. I want to visit countries that scare me a little bit. And we want to go and do some car camper van wild camping. I know it's not quite full wild camping, but you know, just go off grid and just not worry too much about being scared. <laughs> I've done lots of things that have scared me. Things like talking on stages and quitting my job and things like that, but it felt different. This feels, when I look back, like I just, anything where I think I might get hurt. I think I've always been pretty confident about talking in public. So the pain of doing that, yes, it was a bit, I was a bit nervous, but it didn't feel like I would get hurt. And when I talk about hurt, I am talking about emotional hurt. I think understanding now about ADHD and rejection sensitivity dysphoria or RSD and the fact that as ADHD is often we feel that sense of rejection so intensely. I think when I look back I've realised that to avoid any risk of that rejection I've avoided doing things. It's safer not to do something and remove any risk of rejection than it is to give it a try and fear failure and the repercussions of what people might think. And I think I'm done with that. <laughs> I think it's time that I 
let go of that fear. And it kind of starts with a camper van, starting some new adventures. I'm sorry, I've now got the sun behind me. So I thought I would, I wonder if I can get, I go around this field actually. Come on you two and go back in towards the sun, otherwise I'll have the sun behind me. So I thought I would share just in this video, a few of the things that I really wish I could tell my younger self, perhaps some advice that I could give to my younger self. And I think the first bit of advice would be, nobody cares about what you do as much as you think they do. You know, nobody's really watching you. Because from what I've learned talking to other people over the years as they've been a bit more willing to open up is that for most of the time we're all feeling the same blooming thing. <laughs> we're all so worried about what people think of us. We're focused on ourselves. We're not focused on other people. So if nobody's really that interested in what I'm doing, why am I going to let it? stop me from doing things it just doesn't make sense so to my 12 13 year old self i just say don't worry about what other people are thinking they're not really thinking that much about you they're thinking about themselves and my second bit of advice to my younger self would be to not take life so seriously. You know, if you fall on your backside, laugh about it, get up and try again. Because if people are laughing, they're probably laughing with you, they're not laughing at you. And just lighten up, you know. Just enjoy the moment. Don't sit on the sidelines feeling left out and frustrated and feeling like a victim because everybody else is having fun and you're being left out. You did that to yourself, but I get it. I get it. It's that fear. But don't bite your nose off to spite your face. Go and have fun and laugh at yourself. Don't take it all too seriously. I was just too short. Other bits of advice I give to myself, my younger self is, don't worry so much about how you look, your figure, your size. The amount of times I've stopped myself from doing things because I was terrified that I was too big, too fat, not fit enough, I didn't, not athletic enough. And the reality is, you know, when I was thinking all these things, I was so, so slim. I wasn't fat at all. But, you know, just have some grace for yourself. You've got a fantastic body that does everything you need it to do. Trust that it will look after you and trust that there's not a one size is best. Whatever the media and the magazines might tell us, we're all different and we all have amazing bodies. So don't let a lack of body confidence stop you from trying things and taking risks. Don't be so hard on yourself. You look all right. You look good, kid. You look good. Please just tell me what's on your mind. Another bit of advice I'd give my younger self is to not be in so much of a hurry all of the time. Don't be impatient. Don't be waiting and hankering for the next thing because the last thing didn't 
live up to your unrealistic expectations. Just enjoy the moment for what it is. Life is very short, but you've got lots of time. Don't be in such a hurry all of the time to jump onto the next best thing, the next shiny object, the next moment that is going to be the thing that makes you happy. Just be happy in the moment. Embrace it and enjoy it because you're never gonna get that moment back again. And life is short, but you've got a lot of living to do. Don't be in a hurry or wishing it all away too quickly. And then the last bit of advice I'd give to my younger self is that moments are more important than things. I think I've spent my whole life thinking people judge you by what you have in life, trying to keep up with what you think other people are judging you by. But things are so unimportant. Memories, that's what's really important. Creating memories, enjoying moments, not possessions, not things. Things can make life easier but they don't make life happier. And once you've got your basic needs met, you know, you've got somewhere to live, hopefully you've got somebody to share it with, or not, if that may, if, if, you know, if you're happy on your own, that's great, that's not a problem. But once you've got the, the basic needs met, all of the rest is just stuff just things and actually things I think mask our insecurity or at least they do mine I think they were having having things was a way for me to appease myself of the fact that I was avoiding doing the things that would make me happy because I didn't know they would at the time. So to my younger self, don't worry about the things, go make some memories and treasure the memories. Write them down, start journaling really, really early. Start capturing those memories because time passes and you'll forget them, but savor them and don't worry about possessions and things. Sometimes I just like to come out and spend a bit of time thinking and uh, enjoying the moment, which I never did when I was younger. If you've liked this, please do consider giving me a thumbs up and maybe subscribing. My videos aren't all like this, they're not all walk and talks and they're sometimes a little bit more faster paced. But sometimes when, you, when, the, when the day is just so beautiful, it takes, it, you have to take that moment, enjoy it, savour it, contemplate it, take time to think. And that's what I've been doing today. Talk to you soon. Please, just tell me what's on your mind Cause I don't have time to figure it out Figure it out We haven't been our best for love I think that we're just holding on to something 